begin with some breath as we have been throughout this series, breathing in, breathing out, feeling the simple pleasure of being oxygenated. <laughs> Let's take one more breath, breathing in, breathing out. Hmm. I breathe, therefore I prosper. And taking a few more breaths with your eyes closed, if possible, unless you're driving, of course, and then not doing that. And I'd love to offer us a simple invocation for this final transmission in this series. Ah, thank you, Creator, Creatrix, Great Spirit, Divine Mother. Thank you for this breath and this breath. Thank you for each inhale and each exhale. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for all of the abundance that we have right now. All of the prosperity that we are dancing with and thriving within. Thank you for the prospering friendships, the prospering community. Thank you for the prosperous work that we have for the prosperous relationships we have with Mother Earth, with the trees and the flowers and the plants in our near immediate surroundings. Thank you for the prospering relationships we have with our family, with our children, with our parents, with our beloveds, our partners. Thank you for the deepening relationship of prosperity with each and every penny that flows in and out of our bank accounts. Thank you for how prosperous we feel the moment we decide to be a steward of the Divine's dollar, of Divine Mother of Great Spirit's money. Right. Thank you for reminding us that it's not our money, that it's not my money, that I am simply a divine, sacred, holy bookkeeper for God, for goddess, for creation, for the divine mystery, whatever you call it, however you identify that source of all that is. Thank you. Thank you. We bow at your feet and we offer all of our mastery, all of our genius, all of our gifts, all of our skills, all of our modalities. We offer it all, all of our ideas. We offer it all at your feet and we ask to be a living remembrance of prosperity in every nook and cranny of our lives and to be shown the way one step at a time. Blessed be, blessed be. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out, and opening your eyes when you're ready. Thanks for being with me, dear ones. I'm so happy to be with you for this final transmission. And yesterday, if you were able to tune in for day four, we talked about the Empress. We talked about the tarot archetype of the Empress and how great she is at reminding us to be in our sovereign power and to ask for help and to receive help. And I have a couple more tarot archetypes I want to bring in today. And one is in our slides, and we'll get to that later. And the other popped in this morning as I was in the bath. I realized, oh, we need to talk about this character also. And instead 
Instead of, you know, doing the work to add a slide, I figured, no, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to just talk about it. We're going to simply explore. So if you've joined any of my classes or workshops or courses before, you've probably heard me talk about the magician. Today, today's transmission is about aligning your energy. And I realized that I would really love to bring in the magician because when we talk about energy, it seems like magic, right? And it sounds like magic and it can seem almost too esoteric for us to really put much stock in. And yet what I'm here to take a stand for and remind us today and every day is that what is magic really, right? Magic is energy. Magic is using the resources that we have to wield energy, to wield the energy in our lives of this life, right? And so the magician, if you're not familiar with this character, you can see that on the table, there is a wand, a sword, a cup, and a pentacle or a coin. And those are the four elements represented by the four suits of the tarot. And they all correspond to a realm of humanity. So the wands are spirit and energy. The swords are mind, the mental body. Uh, the cups are our emotions, our emotional body, and coins or pentacles is our life work, right? It's like the first chakra. It is our vocation. It is our skills. It is our labor. It's, it's our work, right? Our, our alchemical work. And so what, what I feel is so helpful to remember about this as we go into this final teaching this final piece is that when we talk about aligning our energy, it's, it is both spiritual and practical, right? What I'm talking about is as, as this character is doing really transmuting, being a conduit for spirit to be transmuted, transferred, created into matter and also to be the conduit for matter to rise up into the realm of spirit. And we create our lives. We create everything in our sphere with those four arenas, right? With energy, with spirit, with the power of our mind, with the depth of our emotions, and with the, the clarity and the passion and the integrity in our actions and our work. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. It's really how to be a modern day music, musician. Yeah, sure, that too. But how to be a modern day magician. And that this is, this is, what, this is what I love to do. This is what I love to do every day of my life. And I trust that this is what you love to do also since you're here. So we're going to be getting into this teaching today. And as we move forward, I'm going to pull up the slides and I would love if you'd be willing to share in the chat your biggest takeaway thus far from Real Talk Business Abundance. What is the biggest takeaway from the first four days? Maybe it's an action step, maybe it's a new realization around your numbers, around your systems, around what's blocking you, around why you want more financial abundance or prosperity in the first place. That in a nutshell is kind of the, the big topics that we've covered so far. So I would love to hear in the chat as we move in to this final piece what your biggest takeaway is. And then we're going to get started. And of course, as you know, I'm, I'm here with you and would love to hear from you in the chat. If you have questions as we go, please pop them in there because, you know, we're, we're doing this together, right? We are doing this together. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. 
<clears throat> what is in the way is the way. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And sorting out my enough number. Yeah, beautiful. Such, such potent remembrances. So let's get into this fifth piece, align your energy. So as a reminder, this is the framework I laid out on day one, that when we are talking about prosperity, <clears throat> I want to bring us back again and again to the economy of attention. And this is, of course, an invitation to think about prosperity. And I would also love to weave this in simply for the next 20 or 30 minutes that we're here together, I would love to invite you to not multitask if possible and to decide to really be here fully and to decide to get as much out of today as you possibly can to like squeeze the value out of it because that is the economy of your attention, right? So these are the things that we pay with. We pay with our frequency. We pay with our dollars. We pay with our actions. We pay attention, right? So these are the places where we are up-leveling our economy, our ecosystem. And I want to start today with a fact, which is that the unconscious mind controls about 90% of our decisions, and of course, therefore, our actions. 90%. That is not a small number. <laughs> and I share this because I really believe more and more that if we can change our brain, we can change our life. Change your brain, change your life, right? And I think it's really worth speaking a moment to what is we could call new age manifestation. And I am all about affirmations. I am all about being in a positive frequency, right? I am all about those things. And what I really learned last year 2023 for me was a year of really learning and embodying in a way that I never had before the importance of the unconscious mind because yes like attracts like yes energy goes what is it energy go what attention goes where energy flows right all of those things are true and if this fact is true, which it is, what that translates to is that you can think positive thoughts all day long, right? You can think about how prosperous you want to be or how abundant you are all day long with your conscious mind. But if you're not doing the work of the unconscious mind, you're not going to get very far. And that has been a total game-changing realization for me. And ever since last year, I started really digging in to the unconscious mind. Amazing, magical things have been happening in my life. <laughs> and of course, magical things have happened in my life for a long time. I feel like I'm a great manifester. And this has really allowed me to step into the role of the empress, right? The embodiment of that sovereignty in such a deeper way. So energetic alignment, this is practical and it's spiritual. Of course, the practical, which we're going to talk about both of these today, the practical is taking aligned action, right? It's actually doing the thing and it's grounded in matter. Spiritual is applying the esoteric or the mystical means and it's based in spirit. And something that I feel I say to my clients again and again is that you have to be doing both, right? You have to be doing both. You can't be only doing the energetic work without taking awakened aligned action. 
And you can't only be taking the action without doing the unconscious work, without doing the frequency work, right? The belief work. So we have to be doing both at once in order to move the needle. So here are some ways that I am going to offer you that you can align your energy with where you want to go. We started on day one with where do you want to go? Let's clarify your vision. That was day one, right? So when you clarified your vision, you thought about why you want more money, why that's important to you, what you're going to do with it when you get it, right? What having it will do for your life. How will that make your life different? So here are some ways that I align my own energy on a daily basis. And some of these are going to be Captain Obvious, like this very first one, which is why I put it first. And some of them might be things that you know, but again, what I would ask is, are you taking action, right? Are you actually putting them into practice? So I encourage you as we go through, feel free to screenshot the slides, feel free to take notes. And this first place we're going to start is, of course, gratitude. So this is how I recommend beginning every single day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you journaling for, for an hour on your, your gratitudes. It can simply be the moment you wake up you're still lying in bed and you put your hands on on your chest and your belly and you let yourself swim in gratitude for a few minutes oh my gosh i woke up thank you oh my gosh i have another day to live i have another day to breathe i have another day to be with my child with my family with my beloved with my pet i have another day to be of service, to do what I love, to express my creativity. Oh my gosh, what a freaking miracle, right? And, you know, we, someone said, what's in the way is the way, right? Alana said that. And that is also, right, that is an attitude of gratitude 100%. Because what it really acknowledges is that if I approach my challenges, my obstacles with gratitude, there is embedded in that a belief that, oh, my challenge is the way, right? So of course I'm gonna be grateful for the lessons, for the hardships, because without them, there's no way I could move forward. Each one of those is a stepping stone forward. So this first piece of aligning your energy is a daily piece. It's a maintenance piece, right? It's a remembrance piece. It's an attunement. And it is a wholehearted acknowledgement of what you already have and all of the ways that you are currently abundant and prosperous. I'd love to hear in the chat, is gratitude a regular part of your practice? Or is it perhaps something that you know about and you do sporadically, but you kind of forget to weave it in every single day? All right, this next piece is piggybacking on gratitude and it is to feel it then act. So this hack <laughs> is really an invitation to revisit or relive or remember moments when you felt totally in awe of how abundant you are. There are moments when you felt deep connection, deep synchronicity, deeply and divinely supported right? And when you feel
feel that, when you really feel it, right? Not simply, oh yeah, there was that time and I can sort of, I can sort of remember it, but actually letting yourself feel it, right? So let's all take a moment and practice this. So close your eyes and let yourself find a very specific moment. It could be recently, it could be in the distant future or <laughs> no, well, we're going to do that later in the future, but it could be in the past. So bringing forward a moment that you can remember when you felt incredibly abundant. Maybe it was financial abundance. Maybe it was the abundance of the earth and springtime or summer or beauty or connection with somebody you love. So let yourself bring that forward now. Mm. Yeah, I got one. Okay. So feeling, letting yourself relive that moment. What were you seeing? What could you taste? What, what, what could you smell? What were the colors that your eyes were seeing? What are the textures that were around you? What was the feeling in your heart? How did it feel to be in this moment of divine overflow? And let yourself give a few words silently to how it felt. I know for me, I can feel peace. I can feel expansiveness. I can feel joy and laughter. I can feel the wonder in all of the beauty. And really, whatever it is for you, let yourself feel that now. And then as you feel that, as you feel those motions, imagine yourself feeling those emotions as you sit down at your computer to track your expenses for the month and track your revenue for the month. And what do you notice? What do you notice? If you're willing to share in the chat, what, what, what do you notice as you take that emotional state that you've brought from the past to the present and then imagine yourself doing something that you might have some resistance around. So this is an amazing unconscious self neuroplasticity trick. Feel it and then act. Once you are in that place of overflow, of prosperity, of abundance, then take action on the thing that is maybe a little daunting, that is maybe a little bit prickly for you. And notice if it's even 5% easier, if there's 5% more willingness, 1% more willingness, maybe it's like 20% more willingness, maybe it's 80% more willingness. So this is an exquisite way to align your energy. Feel it, then act. So what we did there was we took a positive, abundant state from the past. We copied it and we pasted it in the present. And as we were experiencing those emotions, then we took action. 
such an amazing tool of wizardry. <laughs> I would love to hear in the chat how that lands for you. All right. The next piece is definitely more of a pragmatic, practical piece, even though that piece we just did was also very practical, right? Even though it had had some real witchy bits to it. This piece is all about educating yourself, right? So whatever you've discovered along this journey that feels daunting for you or that feels hmm, a bit overwhelming or intimidating, that is the place to educate yourself on. So if it is investing, right? If you are totally feeling ignorant and ignoring investing, what would it feel like? What would it look like to educate yourself about investing? What would it look like and feel like to dig in and read a financial book, right? Like read a book on finance, read a book on building your business, read a book, find a podcast, find a webinar, find a course to sign up for, sign up for a newsletter, right? Find some YouTube videos. And Clearly, this is, again, Captain Obvious, right? Of course, we, we have grown up in this age. We are in this very digital age where there's so much information at our fingertips and it can be overwhelming. And what I want to invite us into is to celebrate this and to remember what a total gift and privilege it is that, oh, you don't know much about investing and you don't have a retirement account set up yet, take an hour, go on YouTube, geek out, find some people, some women, some people who you totally like and identify with and learn from them right? Let yourself be schooled. So there are so many different ways that we can educate ourselves when it comes to money, finances, abundance, prosperity. And these are some of the ways that I move into these spaces. So as I've listed YouTube and courses and webinars and newsletters and podcasts. I've got some specific recommendations for you coming up. You might decide to move into guidance or coaching or support or accountability partnering with somebody to actually keep you on track and check in with you and make sure that you're doing the thing that you said you wanted to do. Studying investing, studying money management, finding some new systems that work for you, right? Maybe it's a software, maybe there's an app, maybe there is something that will make your life so much easier with so much more clarity. Reading books on finance, on money, on relationship, on home ownership. Right? Wherever you want to up-level and feel more abundant, dig in, right? Because that is, uh, you might have heard me talk about To Be Magnetic, which is a program that I am an affiliate for and really believe in. And they have this incredible uh, framework and um, they have a term that they use called expanding. And in the to be magnetic world, expanding is when you see to believe that it's possible. So if you are a woman who wants to learn about investing and you read a book written by a woman about investing, you're going to be expanded by her because she shows you, she is literally showing you that what you want is possible, that it's right in front of you and it's been done and you can do it too. I really encourage you to talk to people and be witnessed in your journey of exploration. 
And as you take all of these awakened, aligned action steps, trust that help will arrive, right? If you're asking for help, it will arrive. And for me, every single time it arrives. And so part of my work also is watching for synchronicity, right? Paying attention for the omens. So I want to drop a few resources here for y'all since we are talking about <laughs> getting educated. So reading room. These are some books that I highly recommend that have been really helpful and very expansive for me. It's Not Your Money is a really beautiful one. It is an eight week kind of self-guided journey. I Will Teach You To Be Rich, which is, you know, can be a prickly title. And one of the things I love about that book is the very specific recommendations. It was that book that taught me all about high yield savings accounts. And it was that book that gave me really the permission to stop banking with Chase Bank, who I had always freaking hated and had so many negative experiences with. And it wasn't until I read this book that it actually occurred to me, oh, there, there are like other better options for banking. Like I can switch banks. I can find something where I like actually make money just by having money in the bank every month. Sweet, right? So I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. He gives a lot of very specific recommendations on the best credit cards to get, on the best banks to go with, on the order of operations for paying off debt and saving money and putting money away for retirement, you know, that kind of thing. We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers is an incredible expander for women, for people on the margins, and in particular, her story is so extraordinary because it really speaks directly to the narrative that we have about being on the margins or people on the margins. And she is a self-made millionaire who directs her work at women and people of color and people people on the margins of society and she charges a lot of money for her work and she's good at what she does and people love her right and it's such a great paradigm shattering experience to read that book so highly recommend it especially if you feel really affronted by you know high end offers by uh what's expensive and what's not expensive she is amazing the soul of money by lynn twist is a really beautiful reframe seeing money in a spiritual light that's the same with that first one it's not your money and then chill and prosper is a really great really great book written by a business coach from australia and has a lot of very practical and tangible things as well as energetics so those are some great books, and then I want to recommend to you some things to listen to. There are several podcasts, Financial Feminist, I just recently found this, and it's my new favorite podcast, highly recommend, So Money, Girls That Invest, those are all by women. And then I want to also encourage you to check out Richard Rudd and his talks on prosperity, which you can find on YouTube. Yes. All right. So let's, we're going to do just a few more, few more little slides here before we wrap up. So attuning yourself. We've already gone over some of the ways you can do this. And here are some more kind of esoteric ways. Tapping an EFT. And in particular, I really recommend Brad Yates, who is on YouTube. 
if you would like to play with tapping, which some of you may be familiar with. Affirmations, playing with magnetism, becoming more magnetic, and specifically, I really recommend the program to be magnetic. It's been totally life-changing for me. And I will include my affiliate information on the replay page for Real Talk Business Abundance in case you'd like to get a percentage off. Books, podcasts, and of course, music, binaural beats, chanting, mantra, right? Everything in this realm I consider energetic attunement and is really helpful for, again, starting to get to the unconscious and also working with the conscious. So working at both levels while you're doing all the awakened actions. Also, it feels really important to mention surrounding yourself with people who are also invested in themselves and invested in up-leveling their prosperity and their abundance. A really great exercise that can be very awakening and illuminating is to make a list of the top 10 people you spend the most time around and see that as a reflection, right? And of course, you don't need to kick people to the curb and perhaps in looking at that list, you might realize, huh, okay, I, I think I actually need to surround myself more with other entrepreneurs. I need to surround myself more with artists who are really abundant, who are making good money at their craft with, right, fill in the blank. But it's a, it can be a really, really important expansion and really crucial step to surround yourself with people who you can talk about this stuff with, right? And who can witness you in your process. So this is another trick. So we did the past sourcing and this trick is future sourcing. So we're going to do this together really quickly. So in this moment, I want you to close your eyes, and take a breath and imagine that in front of you, you can see a timeline of your life. And now imagine that you can float up and over this timeline and move forward six or eight months or even 12 months down the road in the future. And I want to imagine with you, I want to invite you to imagine yourself doing the work you love, living on purpose, living your purpose, doing your life's work, getting paid well for your life's work. Let yourself see that number. How much are you making every month? Let yourself see the experience of tracking your revenue and seeing that total that's coming in at the end of every month. Imagine yourself with your favorite people that you're serving whether they're customers or clients or patients or buyers or community members or viewers. Imagine them in their gratitude for receiving your work. Imagine that beautiful sacred reciprocity. Let yourself really swim in that feeling, in those emotions of gratitude, of abundance, of overflow. Imagine yourself paying off your debt. Imagine yourself seeing your credit score reaching and surpassing 800. Imagine yourself putting an extra $5,000 in your retirement account in a single month simply because you can. Imagine 
let yourself really take that in. How good that feels. How does that feel to be fully financially prospering and not only financially, but to feel that you are truly in service and you're truly needing the call. And now that you feel that feeling, as you feel those feelings of overflow and abundance and prosperity and gratitude, feel yourself now in this present moment And from this place of abundance and prosperity, what is the next smallest step that you're going to take toward this future self? Just one, one next smallest step. What's the next smallest step you're gonna take? And let yourself empty out, let your intuition speak. Trust you don't have to think of it. Let it drop in. And when you've got that next smallest step, you can open your eyes. And write it down if you got something. So this is what is called future sourcing. And it's just what we did before with the past, except it's with the future. And you can do this on your own. This is self-directed neuroplasticity. <sighs> mm -hmm. So beloveds, we are nearly at the end here and I have a few more questions to send you with. Question number one, what are three ways you could better align your energy with prosperity in the next 30 days? Three ways you could better align your energy with prosperity in the next 30 days. And as a little hint, I encourage you to start with your ahas from this series. What were the biggest takeaways? What are the action steps that felt like they will move the needle the most for you? Depending on who you are, maybe you'll choose the action, the three action steps that felt most scary because you're like that and you like to run, run toward the fear. Or maybe you'll choose the three action steps that feel the most doable and the most friendly because you want to ease in and that's okay too, either way. So feel free to write this question down or screenshot it. This is your sacred assignment to answer this question. And then of course, to make a commitment to take those three action steps over the next 30 days. And as bonus extra credit, really cannot encourage you enough to tell somebody who can help hold you accountable to these three steps. And better yet, invite them to do it with you. Invite them to do it with you. So this is, this is where the journey has taken us to accountability, to making a commitment, to up-leveling, to doing the aligned actions and to attuning ourselves each and every day to living our purpose to leading a spirit-led life, to creating a spirit-led body of work, and to living our calling. And final archetype I want to share with you is the fool. <laughs> the fool is one of my favorite archetypes because the fool is willing to take a leap of faith. They are willing to take risks. They trust above all else in spirit. And they know the magic of new beginnings and of beginner's mind. And they trust so deeply in divine will and divine timing. So I encourage you, dear one, to be the fool <laughs> this year 
as you move into blossoming into your abundance and your prosperity in new ways, be the fool, try new things, get out of your comfort zone, get to the edge of your comfort zone because you are divinely supported and you've got this. And I want to let you know that if you are ready to receive some help in this arena this year, I've got you. And I would love to extend an invitation for you to come to a free discovery call with me. This is a one hour session where you and I sit down together and we get to be together with the challenge, with the clarity, with the heartfelt direction and purpose and mission that wants to lead you forward toward this abundance. And what we talk about in this session is, first of all, where you are right now and where you want to go. And we talked about this on day one, right? Clarifying your vision. So we're going to do that together, right? And I'd love to hear what your vision is. Is there any more of it that needs to be clarified? We're going to talk about why this vision matters to you. And why now is the divine timing to actually do something about it, to do something differently, right? We're going to talk about what's stopping you, what's in your way, right? Naming your obstacles. And we're going to talk about which solutions and skills you've got at your disposal that aren't being utilized. Another way to think about this is what, what are your blind spots? right? Where are you getting stuck? What are you not seeing that is right there in front of you? And this is, this is really the gold. This is the golden reason why getting help is crucial, right? Because of course we all have blind spots and that's what a good guide, a good mentor will do. They will reflect, they will be a divine mirror for what is being missed, for what solutions, what maps are there, right there at your fingertips that aren't being utilized. And then finally, we'll discuss how and when you will take the next steps forward. So we'll talk about a game plan. And perhaps that game plan might include working with me. And I would love to offer you my support. I have an array of programs in one-on-one -on -one mentorship that range from six-week offerings all the way up to year-long mentorship journeys. I work with people one-on-one -on -one in a private in-person retreat setting, which I call an immersion. And I have a whole array of courses and curriculums that could be a really great place to start. So if this journey has felt helpful to you, beloveds, and if you feel that now is the time that this is the year to do something differently and to up-level your prosperity and your abundance, reach out. Let's explore. You can sign up for this session at brittagreenviolet.com forward slash discover. You can also find it in the footer of my website. I hope that you will go check it out and come visit me. Let's explore. Let's see what is there to be seen. All right, dear one, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me on this journey. It's been beautiful. I really pray and trust that you got at least one piece, at least one golden nugget that will transform your year into a year of overflow and abundance. And know that I'm here. I'm only an email away. I'm a message away. You can reach me on Instagram at Britta Green Violet, or you can email me info at Britta Green Violet. You can contact me through my site. And I really look forward to connecting. Peace, love, and courage on this journey. You've got this. And I'm with you every step of the way. Take good care. <laughs>